In the previous video, you'll learn to make an AI follow the player around a map using the new navigation system in Godot 3.5. In this video, we'll talk about the new avoidance feature that allows the AI agent to move dynamically around moving objects on the map using the same pathfinding algorithm. You can find the files for this project in the description below on our website. You'll not only find the link to download the project files, but also the videos we made about the new features in Godot 3.5. In this video, I'm mostly going to run you through the differences with the step-by-step -step tutorial from last time. <clears throat> to follow along, kinda, you want to open the navigation server 2D with avoidance and open the scene navigation server 2d with avoidance you should see these black holes here the way the scene works is that we now have these black hole objects which are kinematic body 2d with a collision shape and very important a navigation obstacle 2d node this is a node that registers this entity as an obstacle in the navigation system Note that it doesn't have too many properties in the inspector. <clears throat> the only one we have is estimate radius, which is on by default, and which will use a sibling collision shape to estimate the size of the obstacle. Now, avoidance algorithms like these use simple steering behavior, so they work only with circle areas that the agents will avoid. This is why it tries to estimate a radius from your collision shape, and it will do that even if your collision shape is not a circle. But I use a circle here just to block the enemy and player from entering my black hole. Then each black hole has an animation player, and I'm going to start playing the animation. Um, you can see that it goes up and down, and this is just to give it some motion, so you can see that the system takes the motion of obstacles into account. With that, the main other difference to use obstacle avoidance is on the navigation agent 2D node. So I'm going to select it. And in the inspector, you'll see an avoidance category that can expand. And in the previous video, we had this turned off, but to avoid obstacles, you need to turn this on. And this will change how you have to write the code a little bit to make the agent move. Now, you have a couple of properties that you can use, like the radius is the desired radius for your agent. So this time, it's not going to estimate the radius from the collision shape. You have to give it a radius manually. And you have a couple more properties to control um, how early the AI is going to um, take obstacles into account and those kinds of things to avoid obstacles. You can also have the maximum speed of your agent in there. Uh, I'm not sure why this property only exists in the avoidance category, but it's there if you want to use it. Now we have to look at the enemy script. The rest of the setup, like the navigation node or the polygons, this doesn't change, but the script has to change a bit. Let me run you through that. The main difference we have here is that with avoidance, the navigation system has to compute the velocity of the different agents, and it will then emit signals, uh, the agents, that is, they will emit a signal called velocity computed. And you shouldn't move the agent until you receive this signal. So what I'm doing here is instead of moving the agent in the physics process function, uh, I still get the next location of the agent and calculate my steering. Then I call agent.setVelocity to ask the navigation system to update the internal velocity and wait for this velocity computed signal to be emitted. So I connect my agent's velocity computed signal to a function called move. This function receives the new computed velocity and I then call move and slide with that velocity and assign the result to my velocity variable to take it into account the next frame in my steering, right? Because move and slide will use the velocity and then it will return the remainder uh, or what the velocity should become after collisions and those kinds of things. 
and you can assign that to some variable that you keep around. And that's it. That's the main difference. Uh, if you do that, you add the obstacle to the nodes, you turn on obstacle avoidance on the navigation agent, and you update your script to use the signals, then your AI will move like this, it will try to avoid the obstacles. Note that sometimes you have to play with the radius of each agent and each obstacle, just to make sure that you don't have too many collisions, as you could see here. Uh, my collision shapes are pretty big in this project because I wanted to push the demo a bit to see, you know, edge cases, those kinds of things. But if you make them a bit thinner, uh, and you give a bit more margin to the AI um, around the walls of your level, then things can go a little better. You can find the open source demo on GitHub in the description below, and you'll find other videos about all the new features in Godot 3.5. Don't forget to stall the repository to help people find it. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.